I don't know about you, Naldo, but I'm in the need. The need for speed. Let's Ow. do this. Ow! Welcome, everybody, to FYC Film Review. I'm your host, Ghani. With me, as always, my partner in crime, Naldo. How are you, buddy? What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, swell, man. Swell. Yeah, I'm happy, swell. To be, happy to be back in the <laughs> cockpit rocking the, the movies. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, sure. me too. Why not? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Looks like I'm flying along with our, our buddy, Miles Teller, here. I love it. I love it. I am super excited that we are doing a two-for-one special today. Yes. I really am. I really am. So uh, we are going to be reviewing and comparing the original Top Gun from 1986 with the new Top Gun Maverick in 2022. So super excited. I got a question for you, my man. What was your first memory of watching Top Gun? How's that? One of those like HBO, you know, ah, HBO. Saturday night, oh. you know. You should have been of... watching HBO late at night, Christopher. <laughs> I know, 100% shouldn't have, but uh, okay. somehow I got away. I mean, I feel like, of all the movies I probably shouldn't have been watching, like RoboCop and other things in the 80s, this was one that was kind of mild in comparison. Okay. I think the, my memory of the love scene between Tom Cruise and Kelly McGinnis is worse Ooh, than, than it actually is, you know, yeah. for, for a child. So That is a good tongue lashing if I've ever seen one, but we'll get into that oh, later. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Too right. Oh. Was too much for me. Oh, but. So good. <laughs> okay. My, uh, so surprisingly, I didn't see this movie until I was a teenager. Okay. Uh, I didn't see it until I was a teenager. And I remember uh, I watched it and I was like, what is this? What is this? Jet fighters and, and jets flying all over and this Tom Cruise guy. This is, this is great. This is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't really watch it till I was about 12 uh, ish, maybe something like that, maybe 11. Okay. Um, so it took me a while to see this movie, but I saw it and I, I fell in love with it. I, I really did. It is absolute 80s. I mean, just Kenny yeah. Loggins and, and Tom Cruise and uh, Tony Scott action with, you know, with a Jerry Bruckheimer produced uh, oh. film and uh, unique in the sense that like i don't know that i could find another movie that i'm fully aware of that they they really utilized like actual planes and yeah. and true pilots and caught some stuff on camera that i i just don't recall seeing by the time that i you know the first time i saw this and so it felt very unique yep. in it, you know despite its cheesiness and and you know love story and all that um it's a good movie. I, I did you watch it again before seeing Maverick? Yeah, so yeah. we watched it again. My wife, I don't think she remembers or even saw it before. So I made her watch it before we saw the new one, and she was all for it. So I was like, okay, yeah, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I've seen this movie so many times, man. I there's only a handful of movies for me where nostalgia reigns supreme, and Top Gun is one of those movies. From watching it as a kid, uh, growing up, you know, just. Uh, a lot of the 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 uh, pop culture references, you know, dating back uh, just to to being in a relationship, my high school sweetheart with Top Gun, uh, to you and I just saying Mav and Goose all the time, yes. quoting this movie all the time. This movie has so much nostalgia for me, and uh, it just it's it's great. It's one of those movies that just again nostalgia reigns supreme for me. It's one yes, it's one that I have. Uh grossly overquoted uh around the house and my wife had never seen it either and watched it for the first time and thought it was okay, okay. um you know she she enjoyed it but you know felt it a little a little dated and then sure but got her excited at least to see yeah. top gun maverick knowing the backstory now instead of it just being like oh here's tom cruise you know this giant international <laughs> box office star it's like yeah. oh this is a follow-up okay i understand the characters now I'll, yeah. I'll be a little more invested in in this sequel. That's got to be weird, though. You know, if, like our wives watched it, the, uh, probably saw it for the first time, a movie from 1986. So it's got to be weird seeing something like this, like this now versus you and I growing up with it. Sure. Uh, so I, yeah, I, the, I mean, the separation of, you know, decades uh, of cinema and, you know, knowing, I guess, what you know about Tom Cruise now, you know, his his history with with us, with yeah all of it you know it, it changes i think your perception on what this movie was like when it came out and it, it was hugely successful it, yeah. you know the soundtrack was a you know chart topper 
Uh, speaking of the of the scores and the soundtrack, I'm going to say it. I think Top of 1986 soundtrack, the score is one of the best scores ever, hmm. ever. Okay. I had it. I played the hell out of it. I love it. I still love it. And I love the fact that the new one opened up with Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone. Well, actually, it opened up with the anthem and the bells. Yes. Ding. Same same black. Yeah. You know. And then as soon as the Jets start going, you got Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone. So it worked. And I thought it was going to be a little bit cheesy, but I found myself just holding on to my seat. I'm like, oh, I'm getting excited. So. Yeah. There. There's a reason. Uh, it's doing so well still, uh, yeah. you know, here six weeks later, eight weeks later, the, the film is cranking out results. People love it. Um, and yeah, it, it instantaneously puts you right back to where you remember. Like yeah. it's so G what I initially thought, you know, would have been a bad idea. Like, you know, Oh, you're like, you had you, someone told me that that's what they were going to do. They were going to open it almost exactly the same. The only difference is the jets look different. Yep exact same opening movie i would have been like that's stupid <laughs> yeah. but the minute it happened yeah i was like yes yes absolutely uh, i was all in and uh speaking more about the soundtrack and the songs berlin's take my breath away is just so memorable you hear that song and you automatically think top gun and i think they tried doing this with with lady gaga's song which i think is really good too it's not it's probably not as memorable as, as berlin's take my sure, breath away sure. but i love this lady gaga's new song i really do i loved it smart it's a beautiful song she, she's she's uber talented it doesn't have the same effect um, yeah. in the sense that when i saw this when I saw Top Gun, because I was so young, it was like a close your eyes moment. You're not supposed to watch. I think the song <laughs> still makes me, Berlin song still makes me uncomfortable. It's almost like oh. I'm not supposed to be seeing this or I'm thinking about something I'm not supposed to be seeing. Close your uh, eyes, Chris. Uh, Don't oh, watch 100%, it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Get back to the Jets, please. I can't watch the yeah. tongue lashing. Yeah, the tongue lashing. So let's get into the love interest. Let's Charlie, Charlie versus Penny Benjamin. Oh, um, so Top Gun 1986 gave us Charlie the instructor, which I think they introduced her really, really great. Where he's trying to pick her up in the bar, and they yeah. find out that she's really their instructor. Uh, uh, and then they bring Penny Benjamin on in this movie, who they reference one time for like a split second in the first one, and I thought that was good. I just don't think. Penny Benjamin, who was played by, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer Connelly. Mm -hmm. I don't think it worked. I don't think it needed a love story for some reason. Mm -hmm. I just think Penny Benjamin didn't bring anything to the table at all. I think it was just to have a, a, a love interest for him. And to me, I just it just kind of failed in that area, whereas Charlie was more memorable. Yeah, Charlie's a way better character. It, it um, The juxtaposition of like teacher and student and... Yeah you know, him having this ego and, and, but then falling in love or the, you know, falling in love with the woman who's trying to make him bet. It, it works way better. It's just a way better storyline than what they give Penny. I love that they brought Penny in because when I was watching Top Gun, when they mentioned her, I realized, oh my God, that's who they're yeah. bringing. I had high hopes that they were going to do something with that character uh, more than just like, okay, you own the bar that the new pilots go to. That's right. And, yeah. You know, that's, that's that you're you're the sounding board for for uh maverick to to work out his problems yeah i suppose yeah yeah definitely definitely got to give my my nod to charlie she she yeah. wins out Let, let's let's move on the side characters i oh. thought the side characters in the first one are more memorable because you get to know them you know uh, all the trainees because top uh, maverick himself and goose are trainees in the first mm -hmm. one with this one the trainees just came off as annoying they really did. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's unique in this one because even though Top Gun's the school, these guys all went to Top Gun already. So they come back, they're called back yeah. to, to fly a mission, to be trained how to fly a mission. And so they, they almost come back with the same like Iceman attitude and they all have it and they all think they're the best and they all right. think they're awesome. And they, there's not much to it where you're right. When you're, when you're going through school with the pilots in the original, you get to know them a little bit more. Right. Yeah. So it, there's, you know, the focus is on the students at Top Gun versus this time. It's just like, they, they kind of, they're there. They, they went through Top Gun and that's all you really need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's just, I, I get it. Pete Mitchell Maverick is, is the instructor. He's the, he's the old guy now. He's, he's training them to go to this mission, but I just felt like the side characters for me just didn't work. Uh, we get an Ed Harris cameo in this, mm. which was, I just thought, okay, sure. Why not? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know what to make of it. 
Yeah, uh, he's a Bruckheimer staple. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't really know either. It was kind of a throwaway. I yeah. actually forgot for a second that he was yeah, in the new Yeah, one. he was. And Ed Harris is big. I mean, yeah. to use him for, utilize him for about five minutes in the whole movie, five, ten minutes. Yeah. I just thought, okay, I would have loved to see Ed Harris versus a whole lot of John Hamm in this. I mean, I don't yeah. think John Hamm was that bad, but I think he played his his character well. I just I would have rather seen more of Ed Harris. Yeah, interesting choice. Um, again, I think like you know, you got to have that like grizzled admiral, and I guess you got to have the bald guy too. So you know, to yeah. to harken back to uh, who was the I always forget the actor's name, but the, the original but admiral in yeah. Top Gun is the principal in Back as to the, the Back to the Future. And, yeah, yeah, that's all I know him. I don't know his name, but I mean, he delivered. He got one of those classic lines in the original. You know, your ego's right and checks your body can't cash. And is like, that where that's that from? Yes, yes. That's that is that's that so is funny. The, I said that to my wife the other day, <laughs> <laughs> and I could not remember what where the movie where that was. From. I told you, man. I told you. I quote <laughs> this movie around the house way too much, and yeah. she's like, "What's that from?" And I'm like, "Every time, it's like that's right." I am dangerous. That's you know. funny. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Harris will throw away. John Hamm was fine. I, I was indifferent. You know, I guess you have to have an antagonist somehow and he doesn't want Maverick around and fine. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not very memorable. It's, he's definitely no Viper. He's definitely no Jester. Um, no. You know, no. Michael Ironside as Jester is probably one of my favorites in the, the original Top Gun. Um, he, you hated them. Like you, you wanted them to beat Chester all the time. Like, and so I, I liked the protagonist so much more or the antagonist so much more in, in Top Gun. Okay. All right. What'd you think of Hangman in this? I thought Hangman was, was kind of cool in a way. Yeah, he was yeah. fun. He was yeah. cool. I, he was I Iceman. Liked... He was supposed yes. to be Iceman. Yes. And while they didn't do great in setting them up and bringing them in, I yeah. liked his character and how I did too. Him. Yeah. I, I liked, this character a lot uh let, let's uh let's get into it val kilmer val kilmer did you tear up i don't know if i teared up i i, I was expecting it and i i don't i didn't tear up it was good seeing him after watching his documentary i don't yes. know if everybody sees his documentary yes. oh, which, so was, good. which was great so i recommend people watch mm -hmm. the val kilmer documentary i saw him on screen and i just thought it, i just i just had a smile on my face and when they hugged when they when they hugged before he left, I just thought, man, this is great. I I just I just had a good feeling. That felt so real. Yeah, like that hug. Like I don't know how to explain it, but I felt that hug. I I two guys who have known each other for so long, um, who've probably wanted this project to to happen for so long. Yeah. Um, for Val to be where he is now in his career and unable to to really act because he can't speak. Right. Man, I I was so impressed. I I was skeptical at first when they were showing the previews and they weren't showing us in him and you know he's in it, but then you're seeing like a picture. picture. Mm -hmm. You knew the picture that like that's likely that he's dead. Like he might not be alive. It looked like one of those like shots of like, okay, this is a memorial. And yet they found a way to tie him in and yeah. utilize him and give him a real scene. That scene is like everything for for maverick's character and god he just i mean they both delivered they both tom's tears felt real that hug felt real of like friends who hadn't seen each other in in decades i mean i loved it i i'm yeah. so happy they got him in this movie his role is huge even though he's not in it it's because of 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 iceman that that mm -hmm. uh that maverick comes back yep. he calls him up he recommends him so uh and then spoilers in three two one uh when when iceman we realize that he dies in the movie I, I thought that was fitting. I thought that was fitting. I thought they did it really well. Uh, I, I don't know if it was needed, but I thought it was, I, I thought it, it th they did it really well. Yeah. You know, somebody needs to die in this movie. And I thought maybe one of the younger pilots were going to die, uh, but it turned out to be Iceman who, whose, whose death kind of supposed to shock us like a, like goose death. In, sure. in the, so, yeah. And again, done tastefully. I, I appreciate it. You wrap up a character, you know, in, in, a, in a way that was fitting. Hey, yeah. Kudos, Joseph Kaczynski, uh, who directed this. Yeah, uh, high high expectations. I'm sure, even from someone like Tom Cruise, who's a perfectionist when it comes to making his movies. Um, dude delivered. He did. Yeah, uh, Kaczynski or uh, Joseph Kaczynski. He what has he done? He did. He did. Tron Legacy. Yeah, 
Um, Obl- uh, he did Oblivion. He did Oblivion. Oblivion. I never yeah. saw that one. That was pretty good. Was um, it okay? Mm-hmm. Not Tom Cruise. Yeah, he just so. did a, a recent Miles Teller movie on Netflix, um, which I I would recommend. It's not great, but good. Okay, called, called Spider Island, Spider Spider Head. I apologize. Gotcha. Okay, but, let's let, let's keep going. Volleyball versus football on the beach. Yes, I, I you know. The 1986 movie gave us this volleyball scene. And I know people can think of it many different ways. I loved it. I think it's memorable. I love the song, Playing With The Boys. Another Kenny Loggins jam. Another Kenny Loggins jam. And I I loved it. So when they incorporated a football scene on the beach, this, the the song that they use, uh, for who, who who does it? The the song. Um, Oh my God, I completely forgot the song. Yeah, but it's a really famous band. I'm, somebody's going to let us know. It's a really famous band. Um, but it worked. I thought it was great. I thought the song was great. I thought the football play, playing on the, on the beach was fantastic. Uh, it worked. I mean, nostalgia, I, I, I think on the nostalgia factor on this was great. They brought it back in a little bit. It wasn't too much, and they did it just right. So for me, it worked. It, not only did I, I enjoy it, um, but I want to play the, the football version that they're playing where you play the offenses at the same time. Like yeah. that, that was that was genius like and at first i was like why are they doing that and then they explain it and he explains that he's trying to you know build the team and and it, it totally works it, yeah it obviously we know it's the same scene but they actually gave it some some meaning this time you know yeah. like a little explanation doesn't hurt you know you you can bring in a new way to, to look at an old scene. And they just, they did that so well in this movie that it didn't feel like I was watching just a rehash of Top Gun. Yes, there are similarities, obviously, yeah. but it didn't feel like a rehash of this, the first movie. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, let's talk about Goose. Let's talk about Goose and, and Rooster. I, I think the, the relationship is fantastic. I love how they, incorpor- it, they incorporated Goose's son in this movie. And it was, it's like a father and son through no relationship that they're struggling. I, I thought it was fantastic. The way they utilized Rooster in this, Goose's son, was brilliant. And I, I, I just, it was brilliant. I loved so much about, about that character. Um, I loved the Great Balls of Fire, uh, yeah. that, that he performs it and that it, it shakes Mav, you know, you see the flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you see this kid who you're, you've been trying to protect and he reminds you of your buddy that you lost. Um, smart, just smart script. Honestly, I'm going to keep saying that. Like they, they did it. They, they handled it with the care that, you know, of somebody who appreciated Top Gun and yeah. wanted to build on those characters. You write in a story of, you know, Mav keeping him out of the Navy and doing it as a promise to his goose's mm-hmm. wife, yeah. you know, this kid's mom that like, you won't let him go down the same path. Um, and then taking the brunt of, you know, of that yeah. from the kid, it, it's, it's good. It's good. man. <laughs> it, they they could have, they really could have really, you know, half-assed it and just been yeah. like, you know, oh, they're best buds. And, but they created drama where there really isn't, you know, until the very end of the movie with the, with the wild, wild action sequence so i was a little concerned with that 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 action sequence because i thought okay they they hit their target you know the 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 jets hit the target they blew up this target but then it goes beyond that you know when when uh when maverick's planes get shot down and then rooster goes tries to save him like oh man here we go that's gonna take too long why are we doing this but they find that old f-14 and mav flies it rooster's in the back like goose i i Forget it. Goosebumps. Yeah. That, that, that was goosebumps and I was all in. Right? Pun intended. Yeah. I was all in in that moment. I just, oh, what a ride. What I, I felt the same way when the ride. plane crashed down and then his plane also crashed down. I was like, Jesus, like, what are we doing here? This is like, yeah. am I enemy behind the lines? Like, are they going to, you know, but I didn't even think that they had that airfield to, to, you know, jump in a jet. And of course it had to be an F-14, you know, yeah. like just, Oh man, I, I'm gushing. I want to see it again. I enjoyed it yeah. so much. Uh, it it didn't disappoint. That's for sure. And 35 years later, 35 plus years later, I mean, it just they found new ways to. I mean, Jesus, the the stunts alone. You know, the the stuff that they captured on camera this time around it's was phenomenal. unbelievable. They, yeah. they, you know, Tom Cruise in a cockpit taking off an from an aircraft carrier like yeah. that happened. Like 
it you get to see stuff that I, I can't imagine being an actor and in, in, in this movie. I mean, they I've seen some behind the scenes stuff and they really made these kids like be pilots, like go through some shit. Yeah. It impressive. Just, it's definitely impressive. Uh I, I don't know if I have anything else, man. Uh do you how do you want to rate this? Do you want to rate two movies? Or what do you want to yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, let's 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 rate two movies. Okay, let's start with the original Top Gun 1986. Uh, let's go with uh, Jet Fighters. I don't know. What do you want to sure. do? Sure. Let's yeah. Tomcats. 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 That's, that's the F-14. Let's go. How many Tomcats are you going to give it? Okay. 1986. Let's go. First movie. We're going to rate it. 1986. Top Gun. Uh, I'm going to let you go first. All right. <laughs> go for it. Uh, it holds up for me. I okay. still love so much about it. it. has a little bit of cheese. I don't think the stakes are that high at the very end of the movie. So I think that's where it fails. I'm going to yep. go three and a half Tomcats. Wow. Okay. Three and a half Tomcats. Okay. Uh, again, nostalgia reigns supreme for me in 1986 Top Gun. So uh, I am a bit biased on this. I loved it. I love it. I love it. Uh, every time it's on TV, I got to watch some of it, uh, you know? Uh, so because of that, because of I have so much nostalgia with this movie, I'm going to go with a four. Four okay. Tomcats for this movie. Okay. I, I, I loved it. Yeah. Can it's argue? not a five. Can it's argue? a four yeah. though. Okay. Can't, yeah. can't argue. I, I came close to, to giving that. I'm, I'm going to lend my voice to Maverick, the, the 2022 Top Gun, okay. and say that I actually think this is better than the original. Okay. I I, I think that they found a way to up the action. I yeah. think they found a way to create cool new dogfighting scenes that did not feel like the, the old yeah. one. Um, they blended just the right amount of, let's bring in some old characters and give you a bunch of new ones. Uh, I'm giving it a four. Four, okay. Four, four for, for Maverick. Four for the new Top Gun Maverick. Okay, I'm just going to go half a step higher than you. I'm oh. going to go with, with a four and a half. This okay. movie is just fantastic. It, so for me, it's so far, it's the best movie of 2022. Uh, again, I, I, did you saw it with your wife, right? Yes. Did she, she like it? Loved she loved it. it. Yeah, so did mine. Loved it. So like, we went in there and it was just phenomenal. We were, we were just like, wow, what did we just watch? And when a movie can do that and can do that to our wives and it does it to us, it's phenomenal. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Uh, I could do with some stuff, but uh, I definitely go watch it again if I got the chance. Uh, I just I just don't because I'm a dad and I have kids. And I have kids. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, four and a half Tomcats for me. This is, I love uh, it. So we're in agreement. We both agree that the, the new one actually improved. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. You can say what you want to say about Tom Cruise. People like him, don't like him, but mm -hmm. the guy knows how to make box office movies. He he just does. I, yeah. I I think that he's the type of person who is a perfectionist at his craft, and for that reason, I I love watching his movies. I I'm wildly entertained by them. Are they all Oscar worthy and five stars? You know, in our books, no. But I can't remember it's the mummy it was probably the last time i left the tom cruise movie where i was like eh. okay how was that huh? i didn't know that. but <laughs> don't it's bad okay. it just makes you wish you only saw the brendan fraser one ever uh, uh but beyond that you know the guy has got a good track record and man if you haven't seen this go see it before it leaves theaters it is a movie made for cinema it absolutely is, the, the music the action the the practical stunts. I mean, I we don't get that very often anymore. It's, everything is CGI. To to see practical stunts being done, especially when you're talking about billion dollar jets, um, just agreed. I completely agree with you. So far, best movie of 2022. So far, let let's see if it uh, holds up for the rest of the year. So. Can't can't argue. Can't argue. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a damn good time. Go see it. Yeah. Let us know what's better. Top Gun, Maverick. What do you think? Are we wrong? Was it garbage? It was not Highly garbage. Wrong. It was not garbage at all. <laughs> hey, at all. Different strokes, man. You never know. Different strokes for different folks. Gotcha. All right, we're done. <laughs> all right, folks. That's all we got this week. We'll take, check you next time. I've been your host, Gagne, and with me, my partner in crime, Naldo. Sounds good, man. Go watch this movie, everybody. It is one of those movies that you are going to regret not watching in a theater if you don't watch this, just like I did with Jurassic Park, the original one. So go watch this. Get yourself a little rooster stash. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Till next time, guys. All right, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>